Turn in your Bibles uh, to John chapter number 8. I'm going to start in verse 32 and go all the way down to 36. John chapter 8, verse 32. When you got it, please say amen. While you're turning there, uh, congratulations again uh, to, to Brother Will and Sister Laura on the birth of baby Ezekiel James Ray. Excited for them and keep them lifted up in prayer. And we got we we got some more coming down the pipe. I think uh, I won't call them out. Maybe they won't mean to say anything. I won't, I won't call them out. But we got we got some babies to be born. We ought to be excited about it. The scripture says, "Children are a heritage. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them." So some of y'all need to get some more in your quiver. Praise God. You got, I ain't, I ain't pointing no elbows. Praise God. All right, John chapter 8, verse 32. Uh, let's, let's go. Um, I'll start in verse 31. Excuse me. Back, back up one verse. Four. There you go. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Everybody said free. free. Verse 33, they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, look at this, Whosoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus is talking uh, to some people that were following him and also with some Pharisees mixed into this crowd. And he told them um, that you're going to know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. But in their minds, they weren't servants to anything already. Like, what are you talking about? We're Abraham's seed, and I've never been servant to anybody. They're thinking about physical slavery. And Jesus has to give us a revelation that if you're committing sin, you're a slave. He said, whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. Giving them the revelation that it is the sin that keeps us bound. Not a government. Not an institution. It is the sin that keeps us bound. And Jesus then says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I want to talk to you briefly this morning about freedom. Freedom. Come on, let's lift our hands, put your Bibles down, and lift your hands into the air. And let's pray that God would have his way in this church today. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, that you are present here with us today, O oh God, that you've called us out of darkness, Lord, and into your marvelous light. We were not a people, but now we are your people. We have not obtained mercy, but now we have the opportunity, Father, to obtain mercy. We thank you for that today, Father, and I pray today you would help me, Lord God, to preach your word by the unction of the Holy Ghost, Lord God, that, that you should set free today, Lord God. Break every chain in this building, Lord God. All the shackles of sin, let them be cast down by the blood of Jesus, Lord, and bring freedom upon every pew and every row, to every heart, Lord, and to every mind, Lord God, to set free, Lord Lord God, every captive today, Lord God, we bind Satan, Lord God, and forbid him to operate, Lord God, but I lose the power of the Holy Ghost in this place today to set free, to save, to heal, and to deliver, Lord God. We'll be careful to give you this morning all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Come on and shout amen if you believe it this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God, praise God. You can be seated freedom freedom for us Americans is a very is a very popular term and a very treasured term Americans we value our freedom they even call this the land of the free and if you're not familiar with history let me give you a brief history lesson this is really America is an experiment is an experiment based off of the government that we have and the constitutional republic that we exist in because most other nations before America were not free nations. They were under the rule of a king, under the rule of a queen, some sort of monarch where you didn't determine your own rights. The king determined what, you, what your rights were. How many of you would like to live under that system? <laughs> no hands went up. Amen. The catch is you're under that system if you're in the house of God. <laughs> this is a kingdom, not a democracy or constitutional republic. 
nobody's elected Jesus for anything. He just, he just is. <laughs> if you don't like it, you're going to have to take that up with the king. Uh, but Americans, we like our freedom. Amen. We have bills of rights that gives us our freedom. Anybody familiar with the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment, the freedom of worship and the freedom of the press? Praise God. Second Amendment, right to bear arms and to a well-formed militia. Praise God. The Fourth Amendment, right to your peace. And the Fifth right. Amendment, the right to not self-incriminate and the search and seizure. You got to be familiar with those things. Okay, somebody tries to violate your rights. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm just saying, it, it was the first system of its kind. Did you know that? It was the first one of its kind to, 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 to espouse the fact that your rights aren't given to you by a government, but they are inalienable, meaning that nobody can give them to you nor take it away. You have them because you are a human being. Okay. Now, it took us a few years to kind of live up to that promise, but I think we're closer than any other nation has ever been in the history of the world. That is America. That's why they call it the land of the free. You can go outside and shout whatever you want to shout almost, and nothing's going to happen to you. You can talk as much trash about the ruler of this nation as you want. No police are going to come and lock you up and throw you in. The go to Iran and do that. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Go to, go to North Korea and say some junk about Kim Jong-un uh, that he don't like and see what happens. They're not free over there. They're not free to say what they want. And then those nations aren't free to worship how they want. You take, a, you take a Bible over to China and start preaching in the middle of the street that Jesus is Lord. And, and watch how many freedoms you will not have and how quickly the CCP will descend upon you to lock you up and to take you into jail. So we're, we're very familiar with our freedoms. As a, fact, as a matter of fact, it's, sometimes Americans are stubborn because, you know, you ain't going to tell me to do nothing. We don't even like to pay taxes if we tell the truth. How are you just going to take my money? I ain't even give it to you. You're just going to, praise God. We like, we like to be free. We like to be free. Freedom comes down to then the power of choice. That's what freedom comes down to. I can choose what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do it, how I'm going to do it, where I'm going to do it, and with whom. Praise God. I'm going to do it. That is the essence of freedom. It comes down to a choice. The choices that you make. When you are unable to make your own choices, you are not free. It's sounding very political, but I promise you it's more spiritual than you think. When you are unable to make your choices, you are not free. Think of a slave. They are unable to decide when they're going to wake up. They are unable to decide what the work they're going to do or even if they're going to work today. They are unable to decide what they're going to eat. They don't decide where they live. They don't decide the clothes. All of that is decided by someone who has set themselves over that person. All of their moves are dictated. And as soon as they try to make a choice for themselves, they will find out very quickly, oftentimes by punishment or harsh treatment, that they are not indeed free, but they are still a slave. This is the power that sin has over the world. We're living in a society that is very similar to the one that Jesus spoke about. Telling people that you're not really free, but they're looking back at us and saying, what do you mean? I'm not, I'm not a slave to anybody. People will tell you there's no government telling me what I'm to do. And there's no, there's no institution that has me bound up. We think we can go where we want and do what we want. But the reality is, is that sin is the oldest slave and taskmaster. Praise God. Sin is the oldest slave master. It has existed through every government. It has existed through every ruler and exists up until this very day. I grew up in the north, and this is a good example. I grew up in the, not, not out the north, I guess it's the Midwest, Indiana, but it gets cold in the winter times. And I can remember working jobs, and you know, they give you smoke breaks, and, and people were, were so bound to those cigarettes that some days in Indiana, it would get negative degrees outside. That was a regular temperature, and the wind chill would make it to feel like it was colder. So we're talking about negative 17 degrees, and these people who are addicted to these cigarettes just had to force themselves to go out in this cold cold, frostbitten lips trying to take a puff of a stick that is actively killing them. Oh, 
glory to God. Glory. You don't even have to go all the way up to the north. You can just look at the fentanyl crisis and the heroin crisis and the pornography addictions and all the things that we struggle with day in and day out. And yet people think that they are free. But in reality, if you commit sin, Jesus said you are the servant to that sin. And you think that you are free, but really you are bound in your mind and bounded by your faculties to do not what you would naturally do, but to do the thing that has you bound. But Jesus came to upset all of that. Jesus came to reverse all the power that sin had. Jesus came to, he said, to make us free. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Because if you're going to be set free, you need something stronger than the thing that is binding you. This is why we can't put our faith in politicians. I need something stronger than a politician's rhetoric. I need something stronger than the Constitution of the United States of America. I need something stronger than a political movement. I need something that is able to reach down and touch the depths of my soul and to break a chain that has existed since before I was even born that came into fruition by the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden. I need blood that is powerful enough to break every chain that is powerful enough to remove every shackle that is powerful enough to put the choice back into my hands and that blood can only come by one name and his name is Jesus Christ that's why he said whom the son set free is free indeed Jesus is powerful than any government Jesus is more powerful than any politician he's more powerful than any slave master he's more powerful than any king he's more powerful than any entity upon this earth and he knew that once his blood was applied you can be set free from all the real chains uh, that hold you bound for years. Uh, am I preaching to a people that have been set free, uh, that have experienced uh, the chain-breaking power uh, of the blood of Jesus? Uh, and if that is the case, you ought to stand to your feet uh, and shout freedom, uh, freedom in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is what I love about serving God for real is that you're free for real. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We don't have to be servants to sin any longer. Here's what Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 15. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. He said, God forbid. Know ye not, verse 16, that to whom you yield your servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. Look at this, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You, me, everybody that is born, you are servants to sin by default. And it's demonstrated by the choices that you make, by the things that you do. Paul said, whatever you yield your servants, in another scripture it says members, whatever you obey, whatever you do, that's what's controlling you. Take evaluation over your life now. How free are you really? Thank you, Jesus. How free are you? How many times have you did something that you know you didn't really want to do? And then curse yourself after you did it. Say some junk you know you weren't supposed to say. Oh, we ain't shout no more. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Give me some of that. <laughs> uh, where's the jump now? <laughs> we did and said some things we regret knowing good and full well it was a mistake. Uh, but it felt like something in us was pulling us. Uh, flesh in you was pulling you. Uh, taking control. You weren't even in your right mind at times. Uh, I need y'all to testify and be real this morning. Uh, not even in your right mind woke up with somebody you know. Uh, you had no business being in the bed with. The entertaining conversations you know. Uh, you had no business smoking stuff. You know. You know good and full well. You were taught. You were learned. You knew it was a mistake, but yet you did it anyway because before the blood of Jesus, you had no choice. You had no choice in the matter. When it said smoke, you smoked. When it said drink, you drank. When it said lie, you told a lie. Whatever that sin is, it had the power over you. But when you come into when you come into the life that is Jesus Christ, uh, there is blood that is available for you. Uh, and that blood is able to break those chains uh, and put the power back into the hands uh, of the people where it belongs. Uh, not that it's going to fix everything for you, uh, but now I have a choice. Uh, no glory to God. Uh, now I have a conscious choice. Uh, now I've got my right mind back. Uh, now I've got control back. Uh, 
I may not have been able to be righteous before, but now I'm able to live righteous. I may not have been able to live holy before, but now I'm able because the blood of Jesus is able to break the chains of sin and put the choice back in our hands where we don't have to be servants any longer. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This preacher said, Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's a, that's a mighty long list right there. Praise God. And I, I have about three or four items for myself on that list. How many you got on that list? How many of you got on that list? <laughs> Praise God. I know we don't like to do that in church, but I think it's high time we just be honest and say my name is up under one of them words right there. Or at least it used to be. Praise God. That's what the preacher said, verse 11, and such were some of you. Let's not play cute on this All Nation Sunday and act like we were always dressed up in your favorite uh, ethnic garb. Act like you was always holier than thou. Well, no, we don't need to play cute. We need to tell it honest and say I used to be a drunkard and I used to be covetous. Come on, and I used to be in fornication, and I used to be a liar, praise God, as such were some of you. Oh, but he doesn't stop it right there. He said, but you are washed. He said, you are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. See, well, you can come in the church however you are. You have no other choice. People say, come as you are. You can't come no other way than what you are, praise God. You're going to come a sinner. You're going to come a fornicator. You're going to come a drunkard. You're going to come a liar. You're going to come a thief. You're going to come perverted. You're going to come full of anger and wrath and bitterness. But God doesn't want you to stay that way. He's got water fixed with blood that's going to wash you up. He's got a spirit that's able to sanctify you. It's able to justify you. So I'm here to preach to you today. If you don't want to stay bound in sin, you don't have to. Just submit to the water. Give the Holy Ghost. Let God God begin to sanctify let God begin to justify and you can come out clean and white and righteous just like Jesus Christ hallelujah oh hallelujah that's one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible oh thank you Jesus and such were some of you <laughs> he didn't say such are we're not one of them churches that believe you can continue You make a mockery of the blood of Jesus if you do that. No. Oh. Jesus put the power of choice back into your hands. So why would you continue? See, that's the thing about salvation. It doesn't fix all your problems. It gives you the ability. It puts the power in your hands. He broke the chains by the blood of Jesus. He gave you power by his spirit. So now you can choose to live above the sin that had you bound. For you to continue to live in sin would be like the slaves to stay on the plantation after they were set free. Everybody else is looking at them like, what are you doing? Don't you know that you're free? What are you doing? Don't you know that Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation? Don't you know you don't have to take those whips anymore? Don't you know you don't have to take those lashes? Don't you know you can leave this place? And yet and still, they're so comfortable. Oh. So comfortable in that state, and their minds are so plagued by their past, they don't understand. That's what it is when you continue in sin after you're saved. Ooh. The blood has been shed, the curses have been broken, generational curses are broken, chains of depression are broken. The devil's been taken care of. He's been defeated by the blood of the lamb. Jesus even said, I got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. I could, he controls it all. Glory to God. And put the power back into our hands to give us the choice now. Amen. Begin to live for God. Thank you, Jesus. And all this happened because, because of his blood. He bought our freedom. John chapter 8, verse 34. Jesus answered, and verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. He said, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. He didn't say set you free. He said make you free. And sometimes preachers, we can, we can, we can go a long way on one word. and Think like it means a whole bunch. But this is intentional here. Uh, because uh, your captor, captor excuse me, doesn't want to let you go. They didn't want to let you go. There was something 
that is fighting to keep a hold of you. In every struggle of freedom, there's always a battle. Go throughout history. We fought one called the American Revolution. It was a struggle. The colony said, we don't like that you making laws without our input. We're done. We're going to make our own choices. What happened? Fought a war. Next thing you know, slavery was a big old issue. And, you know, North was industrializing. South was stuck in its old ways. And they started battling out. Eventually, what it leads to? A fight. Yeah. Anytime there's coming freedom, there must be a fight. Because the thing that has you bound doesn't want to let you go. So something has got to make it to let you go. It's like that tenth plague in Egypt. Uh, when all the other plagues didn't work and Pharaoh wasn't budging. And God said, I know what's going to make it budge. I know what's going to finally set them free. Go get a lamb. Shed the blood of that lamb. Put the blood over your doorpost. It's going to keep the death angel from taking the firstborn of son and beast. And when that angel, death angel comes through, there's going to be a cry in Egypt like there has never been before, nor will there ever be again. And it happened. And that old Pharaoh, which is a typology of the devil, he could not resist. He was, his hand was forced. His hand was forced to let them go. Something's got to break you free. See, you can't just will yourself to be free. You can't just listen to motivational speeches and think you're going to be free. You can't just think happy and good thoughts to think you're going to be free. There's no amount of books you can read or intellect you can gather to make yourself free. You need something external from you that is not bound by the same thing that you are bound with uh, to come and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Uh, that's why it had to be Moses, because uh, Moses was never a slave. Uh, Moses was never in shackles. Uh, oh, glory to God. Uh, Moses never experienced the whip. Uh, it takes something outside of you, uh, uh, something that would Endless, uh, something that had pure blood uh, to break the chains. Uh, that's why Jesus said, whom the Son set free uh, is free indeed. You shall know the truth, uh, and the truth is going to make you free. Uh, it's going to break those shackles. Uh, it's going to break those chains. Uh, and as soon as Jesus hung his head upon the cross uh, and dipped it down and said, it is finished, uh, you better believe that all the power of Satan uh, in that moment was broken. Uh, all the power of addiction was broken. Uh, all depression was broken. Uh, so Suicide broken. Wrath and bitterness broken. Fornication broken. The power is back into the hands of the Son of God. And he gave it to his people to make us free. That's the greatest revelation. That's why we celebrate. That's why we jump. That's why we shout. Because I was hopeless. I had no way out of the sin that I was in. But I found the man by the name of Jesus. And I went down in the waters of baptism. I used to be everything on that list. But God, the blood of Jesus, it set me free. I used to drink, but now I don't. I used to party, now I don't. I used to be the worst of fornicator, but now I don't. And it's got nothing to do with me. It's got all all to do is Jesus. And if you've been set free like that, you ought to shout with the voice of triumph because God has set you free. He bought our freedom. It was a fight. It was a struggle. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Scripture says this, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Look at this. For you are bought with a price. What was that price? It was the blood. That's why we sing songs about the blood. It purchased you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. You are bought if you're in Christ, that is. You were bought with a price. This body you got is not yours. It's not yours. Sin used to own you. Now God owns you. Bought and paid for. Not even any payments on it. He don't have an interest rate. <laughs> bought and paid for. Look at what Paul had to say in Romans 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2. God forbid. Somebody tries to convince you to sin over the pulpit, say that back to them. God forbid. Try to make an excuse for their sin. God forbid. We shouldn't really make a habit of continuing in sin like the grace is just going to cover it. 
Paul said, continuing, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. See, the baptism is not just a ritual. It's the way you identify with what Jesus did on your behalf. That's right. That's right. He died. He shed the blood for you. He was buried, and he rose up from the grave. So now you can experience a new life without having to physically die. We don't have to go put you in a tomb and try to call you out three days later. No, you can have newness of life just through baptism, which is the same process. Repentance is death. Baptism is the bearer. When you take you out of the water, you get the Holy Ghost. It's a new life. He said in verse 5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, also in the light, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Look at this. That the body of sin might be what? That's what baptism does. It destroys the body of sin. That's why you can't live for God unless you're baptized in Jesus' name. There's a whole bunch of Christians out here that think they're living for God. They never been baptized in Jesus' name. And they're secretly frustrating on why they are unable. They read scriptures like, but such were some of you, but you're washed and sanctified and justified. And they're thinking to themselves, I'm still like that. The preachers are still like that. Now, if the body of sin is not destroyed, then they are still servants. Though they believe in Jesus, they are still servants. Because they have not applied the blood of Jesus to their lives through the waters of baptism. So you get hypocritical churches. People that start believing, well, it don't work. It's a myth. No, you just didn't do it right. Mm. You just ain't doing it right. It's not a myth. It works. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. It works. You just ain't doing it right. I don't know about you. I'd rather not fool myself. When I read this scripture that my old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. I want that. That henceforth we should not serve sin. I want that. For he that is dead is freed from sin. I want that. Verse 12 says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. I want that. Oh, glory to God. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God. Here's a revelation. Though you're free, you're still a servant. God's intention was never to set you free to do you. A lot of Christians think, I'm set free, I can do whatever. No, 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 no. You were just serving the wrong master. By the way, that's what Lord means, master. So every time you lift your hands and say Lord, you're saying master. As Adonai in the Hebrew, master. Master, you used to serve what you wanted to do, what that flesh, the lust era of Paul just said. But now I have a new master, and that new master told me no. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm going to let it sink in. You don't have to shout just yet because we need revelation. Praise God. We need understanding of what Jesus has done through his blood. He became our master. Ooh, Jesus even said it. You call me Lord, Lord, and so am I. He said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into him. Because they're calling him master, but not doing anything he says. Remember, you're only a servant to who you obey. And the truth is, some people, our managers at our jobs are more of our masters than Jesus. You do what they say in a heartbeat. But let Jesus tell you something through the word of God. I got to pray on that one. What kind of foolishness is that? What kind of master do you think you're serving? No. When they were set free in Egypt, they weren't set free just to wander. They were set free from one place to be brought into another place. God has a destination for you to bring you into his kingdom. And there's still a king. And his word is still the law. And it's still his kingdom. And you've got to obey what the king says. Otherwise, he's not your master. Don't even call him Lord. Praise God. 
Praise God. Because of the blood of Jesus, we have the opportunity to be set free. And not a partially free, all the way free. Free indeed. Now, lastly, I got to tell you how do we get this freedom. It is a doctrine that is able to set us free. Look at this. Romans chapter 6, same chapter we've been reading in, verse number 17. But look at this, verse 17. But God be thanked that you were the servants of what? Okay. But you have obeyed. Remember, we talked about obedience. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered. So the only way you can be set free from sin is to obey the doctrine. Doctrine is a teaching. What teaching did they deliver? I'll read the rest of the scripture. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Paul tells us that it is obedience to the doctrine that they delivered to those saints in Rome that set them free. Here is the doctrine. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Essentially, saints, you need to be born again. You need a new body that is different from the body of sin. That one's got to be destroyed in the waters of baptism in Jesus' name. You need to be born of the water and of the Spirit. The Spirit is the Holy Ghost on the inside that gives you the power to live above sin. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. That power is not just to speak in tongues and lay hands upon the sick. That power is to live free from sin. Say it again. That power is to leave free from sin. It gives you power when your flesh is crying out, talking about do it. The Holy Ghost is crying out, talking about no. You didn't have that before you were filled. All you had was your flesh. But now you have the Holy Ghost saying no. Shut up. Sit down. Be quiet. All of the above. The Holy Ghost is not just for speaking in tongues. If we allow it, it will mold us. It will shape us. It will wash us. It will, scripture says it will sanctify us to allow us to live different lives than what we lived before. It is foolishness to try to be a Christian without it. You're not equipped to do so. You need a new body and you need a new spirit. You need a new wine vessel and you need new wine in the vessel. You can't do it without it. And how you get it is the doctrine. Water birth is my, uh, 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 baptism in Jesus' name. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 37. This is Peter preaching the fulfillment of the new birth. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, water and spirit. That is the doctrine that they preached everywhere that they went. I'll prove it to you. Because remember, Paul said you are saved to set free by the form of doctrine that was delivered. So what doctrine did Paul deliver? Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 6. This is Paul preaching here. Are you ready? Acts chapter 1, verse, um, excuse me, Acts chapter 19, verse 1. Did I say that backwards? I think I might. I might got excited. Here we go, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding the certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That means you can believe and not have the Holy Ghost. You can believe on Jesus and not have the Holy Ghost. You can believe that he was a, a virgin born. You can believe that he was a sinless man. You can believe that he went to the cross and died for your sins. You can believe that he rose up on the morrow after the third day. You can believe in the gospel but still not have the Holy Ghost. And Paul knew it. And he asked these believers, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Look at his next question. And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized not if they were baptized he said how were you baptized and they said unto John's baptism that's John the Baptist Paul said unto them John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on Christ Jesus look at this verse 5 when they heard this heard what the doctrine 
when they heard that doctrine, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about 12. That is the doctrine that Paul preached. That is the doctrine that he said, when you obey it, it will set you free from being a servant of sin. That is the doctrine that was delivered to Ephesus, delivered to Colossae, delivered to Galatia, delivered to Rome, delivered to Thessalonica, delivered to Philippi, delivered to Corinth. It was the same doctrine. Everywhere they went, they preached the same thing. And I'm glad to be preaching the same thing to you this morning. If you want to be set free from sin, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It's going to remove your sin. And you've got to let God fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you'll know it happens because the same thing that happened to these gentlemen is going to happen to you. You're going to speak with tongues as the Spirit give utterance, filled up with the Holy Ghost, the living water bursting forth from your belly, wells of living water. It was prophesied, now it has been fulfilled. We can be set free by the doctrine that they preached. Let's all stand, I'm closing here. Thank you, Jesus. Freedom. Thing that we cherish so much you can experience the most pure form of it if you all are willing to obey the doctrine and there's no devil in hell that can stop you this morning from obeying this doctrine the only thing that can stop you is you and when I read these scriptures I got to be honest and say, Lord, work on me. I'd be a fool to act like I don't need the blood of Jesus. Because remember, what I'm preaching to you today, it sets you free from one master to serve the right master. But you still have to choose to serve him. You're free. God, is, he's a man of his word. He said he's going to set you free. You're going to be free. He's not going to make you do anything afterwards. Sometimes we think, you know, God's going to make us. No. No. You're going to have to continue. Paul said, now you become servants to righteousness. I used to serve sin. Now I serve righteousness. I used to serve myself. Now I serve God. choice. I can't make it for you. Now, if you've yet to be baptized, we've got, we've got water that's ready right behind the wall here. We've got clothes for you to change into. It only takes five minutes. Five minutes can change your life. That body of sin can be destroyed in the waters of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and you can rise up a new person ready to begin that walk living, serving the right master. Or you can choose to continue being bound to the things that you're bound by. That choice is yours. I encourage you today, choose life, Moses said, that you may live. If you're in this place today, maybe you're having a hard time serving God. You're supposed to be serving, but you find it more convenient to serve yourself. We need to repent. Say, God, help us, forgive us, and help us to serve you. Every hand lifted, every eye closed. We're getting ready to pray, and as we pray, feel free to make your way to this altar. Altar workers, you can go ahead and start praying with those that are here or those that are ready. We're going to pray to ask God to help us to be servants of righteousness and no longer servants of sin. I want to trust God at his word, that whom the Son set free is free indeed. Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you won the victory for us, Lord God. That you purchased our salvation by your blood, Lord. And Father, we repent because we've taken that miracle for granted, Lord God. We've taken your blood for granted, Lord God. God, we've taken it as a proposition, but you, you want us to serve you faithfully, Lord God. And I pray that you forgive us. Forgive us of all sin today. Forgive us of all unrighteousness, Lord. And help us, oh God, to live for you authentically, Lord God. We want to be set free from every chain that holds us bound, Lord God. Chains in our flesh, Lord God. 
chains in our mind, mental things, Lord God. Generational chains, Lord God. God, we want to be free in Jesus' name, Lord. So I pray, Lord God, that you will remove every hindrance that would keep us from obeying your word today, oh God. Remove, Lord God, every block, Lord God, that would keep us from experiencing the freedom that you purchased upon the cross. Remove, Lord God, all the shame and the guilt out of our lives that we can walk truly before you, oh God. Lord God, that your will can be done in and through our lives, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that your will would begin right now, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, begin to fill up with the Spirit of oh God. Begin to, Lord God, bring conviction, Lord. Begin to move in a mighty way amongst every heart and mind that is here. For we lay ourselves before you, Lord God, Jesus. Praying, Lord God, that your will would be done, Lord. Have your way in us, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Come on and talk to God for yourself. Come on, it's time to get free. It's time to make a declaration. We're going to obey. If you need the Holy Ghost, come on and let us pray for you. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you need to be baptized, now is the time to do it. Don't wait any longer. You've waited long enough. Now is the time to do it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Seated in my 